perfect. Okay, so here's our list. Uh, basically just Jeskai Delver, or an Stoneforge Mystic. We've got a nice, cute little Stoneforge package, and um, yeah, we'll see how it runs. League match. All right, I do as a list. I did not. Okay. Nice. I got the f what is wrong with my computer? All right, well, whatever. Won the die roll. Take the play. This hand seems great. Keep. Oh. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the three lines or the fact that I'm not doing anything on turn one, but like other than that, I'm fine with that. I also get to lead on a Misty Rainforest for the uh, misleading value. Here's the turn. This is probably just going to be a tapped Hollow Fountain. We'll play the Sprite Dragon on two. We're against Death and Taxes. Helix should be really good here. Nope. Oh. Our turn. Draw. Get a Delver. I don't think that changes anything. The Sprite Dragon. Actually, it does um, let us play. Like, uh, we could play Delver and then hold up Helix or Leak. Helix and Leak. But I think um, play Anti Strider might be better. We'll see. If they play a creature, we care about killing. We might be Helixing it. Otherwise, we might be Mantis Ridering. Especially if it's a Thalion, too. We can't exactly kill that efficiently. Pay three mana for that's a lot. And then obviously this battle leak's only gonna get worse and worse. Spread dragon's a cute little dude. Alright, well there's the Thalia. So like we could leak the Thalia, but I feel like that's not gonna get us very far. Okay, we'll draw. Okay, well, now it's looking like we might have to leak this Thalia, but that's fine. We could do that next Yeah, I kind of just did the market. Since we're on the play this game, I want to kind of just bash our opponent's face on. We've got a 15. They might have a Draven Inspector or a Gipper Burns. Okay, that's really good for us, actually. I actually don't really know what I'm scared of here. Yeah, like Arbiter strip finding our lands isn't actually that bad. Okay, that's not good. Okay. Let's take two down to 14. Okay. 
Okay. Well, we could either Helix or we could Double Delver. I think I'm fine to just buff them for one and then Helix. Yeah, I'll just Helix at the end of their turn. That's right, we play around Arbiter attacks and then, um, yeah. We could just play the two Delvers after that and then our board looks really solid. And then we also go to 13. Okay, lots of fine. We'll leave this. Then we get to untap and then bop the Thalia, probably. So for four, sure. Okay, we get a ten. Oh, I'm glad they didn't violate that Skyclave aberration. Stoneforge. Stoneforge is interesting. Oh, let's attack and then see what they do. If they try to flash in a flicker wisp, then um Yeah, I think we'll play Stoneforge and Delver here. Our opponent hasn't had uh land destruction in the earlier turn, so I don't think that helps him now. I think we're just getting batter skull as well. Oh, we can't search. Uh no, we're so dumb. That's fine though. I'm so used to playing decks for Leon and Arbiter only affects my fetch lands. It also affects my Stoneforge Mystics. Yeah, I guess that's just like my inexperience with uh, Stoneforge really showing. Right, we could double block this Thalia, which I'm kind of game for. They'll probably kill our Stoneforge because they can't risk us having a Batter Skull in our hand. No. Ah, oh, Flicker was. Oh, this is so bad for us. Now we just lose it for free. Okay. Well, that's not good. okay. I mean, I, like, we prevented two damage at least, I guess. We'll reveal that. We really need to get these out of our deck, though. They're just dragging us down. Yeah, we're just gonna string it down for three. If they trade, we actually want that. Yeah, this is good. Like, we're ahead in resources right now. And, oh, uh, actually, no, 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 Yeah, we wanna kill this now. Uh, cause we don't want them to be able to flicker with spit in response with this file. Yeah, so now it's their Leon and Arbiter versus our nothing. Which obviously doesn't sound very good, but it's actually a lot better than it is. Or than it sounds. Okay, so they cast their own Stoneforge. That's not good. That's 
pretty freaking useless. Let's see Okay, that's pretty good. So we can serum visions into a Mantis Rider next turn. Uh, yeah, I guess we're just pathing the Batter Skull. Like the Turf token. Doesn't feel great, but honestly, it might win us the game. Could also path the stone forge and then they might hard cast the batter skull. And then we get to kill them with our I actually like that. Seems like an epic bait. Well, I don't know, they can't even search. Yeah, let's just path them. Yeah, so if they find a land and then decide to hard cast the batter skull, they go to five. We flip the Delver, and then we try it out. Okay, they decided to not go for that. It's fine though. We flip Delver, we get to put them to five. We'll take that. So they're super far off getting their batter skull in play. So we're in a good position. Okay, we'll flip the Delver. We'll draw, get the Serum Visions, we'll draw a Mantis Rider, and then we could look for a red source. Uh, but we do have to remember to, to do the search thing when that comes up. Okay, hit them. And we still have Leak up, so it's actually not that bad. They know about the leak, but... Okay, we'll put this on top. It's definitely clunky, but it will win us the game. And it's just very good. Okay. Sure. Oh, we're just leaking this. We're, we're definitely at the point where we're just kind of leaking anything. And um, these giver of rooms can be quite problematic when there's two of them. Take two, three, sure. Okay, so that makes me think they don't have like a flicker as well. To fly. Well, actually, yeah, I don't know. This doesn't really make me think anything. You know, thinking about it, this fetch might not have been that good. You know what? We could just pass the turn, right? And then we can block their giver of runes, fetch, and then that'll put us down to one. Yeah, this is fine. You're just done attacking. Well, this vial's been so useless for our opponent, though. Yeah, this is fine. So the Stoneforge doesn't do anything, but it can, like, quote-unquote, vile the, the thick end next turn. Okay. So they'll hit us for two. Sure, we'll go down to two. Okay. And I think we have this one locked up, as long as the one mystery card in their hand isn't flicker us. So we'll pay two. And we will fetch. We'll get a tap steam vents. Okay. And we'll go to our turn. We'll bash them. No. Fuck. <laughs> uh. I think we've lost. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, whatever. Maybe they'll just forget to block. Oh, okay, GG's to our opponent.
their flyers really got us. We can bring in some more removal. I am not a fan of counter spells in the uh, Aether Vial matchup. <laughs> Needle's honestly fine here because uh, it can hit Giver, a Vial, and then Equipment. I mean, rejection can technically counter some things. I don't know. I mean, I think leak. It leak isn't useless, so I think I'd rather have one leak over any. Like shoal on vial is all right, but we're not usually shoaling the vial. That's really unfortunate. We lost the game on the play there. I think we definitely had a chance there. But we'll keep this. This is good. So we'll go to our main phase, and I'll just pass the turn. Okay, they get their file, sure. Okay, well, we're going to draw. Okay, opt. Yeah, I think we're just getting powder skull here. If we had another creature, I think Fire Nice would be all right, but uh, I think Better Spell is just the play here. Okay. Opponents taken up. Okay, they're not running super light on lines. They've got their own stone. Okay. Sure. Okay, hopefully we can hit a land, because then we can batter skull and kill their stoneforge. The freaking mirror match intensifies. Oh, we did hit a land. Okay, and it's not a two, so they can't like arbiter in response. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go to see things. Just pass it back to them. Okay, so they have a batter skull in hand. Oh. Put the batter skull in, and then we'll just start bashing them. Dude, imagine this card being banned for modern. It's ridiculous. It's good though, it's a good card. Okay. We do have to be a little wary of Arbiter. We'll just hit them for five here, I think. If they file something in, we can just kill it. Okay, I'll wait for them to search. We still have a pause on their attack stop. What? Wait, they just didn't search, right? Am I missing something? Okay, so they have... They're probably running sword, one sword of Batter Skull as well. So that means they have it in their hand. Okay, well in that case... 
let us do we path it? Probably not. I think we just sudden shock it. Okay. You can path the rest of their creatures. Path on the churn. I mean, that's honestly fine. We'll be able to just straight up equip it. So, yeah. yeah. You could also bounce it and then file it back in too. Like we just hold up five mana and then do that. I think I'm probably just gonna fetch now and get a point to play around um, Arbiter off of a vial. This is good. Basically, like, the first one of us that's forced to use Path loses this matchup. Path just kind of kind of blows when both players are trying to tempo each other out. Path do kind of be hot garbage sometimes. <laughs> Oh, you know what? We can actually just bounce the better skull now. Let's play a Delve, and I'll pass the turn like the intellectuals we are. Okay, this is fine. It's annoying, but it's fine. I think our opponent's really struggling. They've got two cards in hand that are just equipments that are kind of clunky. And then um, one of the cards is fresh that we know of. to look for like a spell snare or something. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, uh, sword. Fire it up. <laughs> Beyblade, let it rip. <laughs> um. Oh, we got our 2 2 back. This germ is a uh, let him rip. Um, okay, what is going on? Yep, you got vials. Oh my god, I just need to auto yield these. My timer is just disaster right now. But I'm also having the time of my life, so, you know, it's kind of worth it. Okay. Opponent kills their four Sword of Fire and Ice. All right. Rude. Played their own Sword of Fire and Ice. Okay. I didn't even get to draw anything off the Sword of Fire and Ice. No. Okay, now we have no white man. We've got one Seacrum Ghost in our deck. Okay, we might actually be in a pickle. 
Last card in hand is a batter skull for them. Sure. I mean, if we draw another white man, we're kind of chilling. Ghost Kodor in the plains is just super good. Yeah, but they've got basically nothing going for them. Like, it's just the Skyclave Apparition. Sure. They swing, we're blocking. Yeah, sure. That's what I thought about it. That's really good. So they might block here, and then we get to abrade the sword. Now yeah. we get to use the abrade as spicy tech. Uh, this doesn't play around liquid very well, because they can save their own guy. Or save their own thing. a little bit rougher than I wanted it to be, but that's just kind of how it goes. Your deck's really fucking annoying. I like to play with lands in play on my side of the field. Uh, this hand does not allow me to fulfill my thing. <laughs> I, I should have been more specific. That was the most fucking Bunky's Claw outcome of a wish I have had. Alright, hold on. Oh. How many is this? Four? All right. All right. Four cards. It's respectable. I mean, we could just bottom, like, Sprite Dragon Sword here. I don't hate it. I mean, I do, but... Uh... Maybe just Serum Visions? Okay, if they leave file, yeah, now we could just needle their file on one. Turn on. Look, it's like the mirror match, but I just play a card that means your card doesn't do anything. And then we get to use MTGO's interface, Vial. Imagine if we just named like Alchemist Vial. Okay, we're a little bit behind in the card race, but we did bop their agent vial, so we've got that going for us. Okay, they play a 1 2. We're gonna play a better 1 2 then. Will they be ready for this? We get two of them. Okay. So, I think this first one is just going to get um, Batter Skull. And then the next one, we might have four mana in play, and then we can rip. This is actually really good for us, though. Again, like, Path to Exile is just an absolute godsend. It makes this so much easier. Like, we could almost just hard cast this Batter Skull two turns. Which should not be legal. It's like, you take going on the play and going on the draw, and then we're just ahead in mana for whatever fucking reason. Yeah. Okay. No swing. And then we drop here. 
Interesting. Okay, this one's tapped, but we get to play. Stone Forge. We get our sword. Okay, and then we'll just pass it back to them. This is probably just an island, I think. But it could be. Yeah. Well, this flooded strand is going to be our last source of red mana. Just use that sparingly. Just See if they want to cast anything. Okay. We can only cast one spell every turn, so and then this isn't going to be an untapped source of mana. Oh, okay. Thanks. We got our spell snare target. It's a pretty good one, huh? Okay. I think we're definitely violating in this uh, better school. I think we're also getting this blue red land right now as well. Uh, the reason being is they can give it pro black and then block, but then we can punish them by casting the sealers. Hmm. Definitely makes things more interesting. I'm not sure if we need We can cast it second man, I guess. Let's just see if our opponent's greedy. The thing is, is playing the Sprite Dragon, main phase one doesn't do anything anyways, because, um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't do anything because we can't attack into the two, three. the Sprite Dragon, and we get to pass the turn. Horizon kind of be sure. Okay, so our big plan now is to really just vial in the sword, and then we get to have the big germ and the big Sprite Dragon. I mean... It's an argument to be made that we just don't crack the steam vents there, but we couldn't threaten the Archonus efficiently if we did that. Okay. We could also just put this on the stone forge to, if we wanted to. Okay, that's awkward. Um, Yeah, I think I'm just throwing it on the Sprite Dragon. Sure. Probably gives it pro blue or whatever. Pro red, sure. We're fainting a path to exile here, because I think it's cute.
if we can get this Archon off the table, then our opponent is kind of, like, turbo-fucked. Okay, that's actually not a terrible draw. Okay. Oh, we're just going to do the same thing we did last turn. This seems like a weird line, not gonna lie. Ah, that makes more sense. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I'll shuffle. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'll just move the sword over and pass. I mean, this actually doesn't really change anything because the Stoic Forge wasn't doing anything anyways, and uh, the Sprite Dragon wasn't really terribly threatening either. Uh, this is basically useless, right? Like, are we hitting red mana? Hey, if we hit red mana, we'll just bolt them, right? So can this get, like, no, not really. Okay, we're just swimming with every line. Our opponent has, this only targets legendary creatures. Uh, we're in a fine spot. Yeah, our opponent's living, but like at what cost is the question. I think we're just very far ahead here. Yeah, they drew Ghost Quarter. I, it's a card. Okay, well our opponent's just dead next turn if they don't draw anything. Okay, well that is not nothing. Okay, this complicates things. Okay, Spire Bluff Canal off the top would be really good. Vaulting, Gipper Burns. useless. Oh, I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, good news, this Rainforest could fetch to shuffle. It doesn't really do it a lot, though. Sure, they're going up to eight, yeah. We need to get this Giver of Runes off the table. Ow. I mean, this is a sad note to end this game, I guess. We'll see. I mean, we're still in it. It's just super painful for whatever fucking reason. Like, 
we were on the draw on a bolt of four, so like if we won this game, that would just be rad. Just check my deck list real quick. I think I'm running two canals. Yeah, I'm running two canals in the Seek Room Ghost. Any of those would be really good here. Because I could always just sacrifice this fetch land. And then play the, one of the fast lines. The issue is the fast line still enters tap no matter what. Because the Archon. Oh my god, it's so lame. Wait, what am I doing? Okay, so we move this over, right? Okay, I my brain might have been off this entire time. I think we can overtax this Giver of Runes. I don't know why I just thought of this. I'm kind of just throwing the game. Uh, well, yeah, that, that that plan is officially doomed. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah, and now our stone forge dies to the sword. Yeah. This is unbelievably tragic. <laughs> This is a little too late to like we had so many like decent outs and then they just all disappeared. Like we just don't have lands because we've lost basic planes. Hollowed Fountain, both of our Steam Vans. Yeah, whatever. Ugh, that's so annoying. <laughs> Alright, whatever. I think I'm... Um, yeah, I don't know. That was just brutal. <laughs> both of the games I lost, I just kind of... But I think if I just equipped the sword to the germ token, I could have blocked the batter skull and then forced them to activate the keeper of runes and then attack them. I don't think I really would have gotten a whole lot out of that. It, our opponent's like life total would have just remained constant, but it wouldn't have gone up. Or I guess it would have gone down by two every turn. I don't know. I, it was just, that was a misplay on me. It could have won me the game. I didn't think that I had an out. Or, like, I, I was just looking for my outs. I didn't think of that as a line. I'm not used to playing with them. All right. This is a mulligan. What's this? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, this is a mulligan. I... I just don't understand. I think a three card hand can be better than this. Yeah, we're, we're keeping this. This right here is peak Magic the Gathering. If you don't think this is an amazing hand, it was better than all the other ones we had. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, our opponent kept seven cards. <laughs> <That's... laughs> okay, this, if they kill this Delver, we might be conceding. Sure. 
this might be the the chest I flagstone stuck. Oh, that's interesting. If it was the Jeskai Flagstone stack, they would have taken Trium. But they might have Trium in hand. Potentially. I don't know. Okay. But it's Strand. No. Oh, <laughs> this, this game. <laughs> I, you know, it's just going to be one of those leaks, I guess. It's going to be one of those leaks. Okay, I definitely misplayed. Okay. Actually, I have no idea what my opponent's playing. This is some hot jank. Fresh from the 01 bracket. Oh, no. It's my favorite guy. Well, you know what? We drew the extra line, so we're kind of just fine. Wait, what else did they target? Oh, as indestructible. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's very confused for a second. It's like they didn't even target their flagstones. Okay. That's good. Uh, we'll draw Serum Visions. I mean, I'm just not going to cast it. So we'll just keep our lands up so that they can't get targeted by anything and then we'll just hold on to the serum missions until we draw something like a sprite dragon um we might serum visions if we get another one cmc blue spell because like even if we serum visions into a shoal uh, or like a spell snare that doesn't protect it from bolt well serum visions now obviously because we don't have a threat so yeah we'll fetch Turn. I think we'll just get an island. Yeah. We'll keep our duels for later because I value them. Okay. Well, Delver Serum Visions on top is good. We'll just top both of them. That way we can play Delver, we get to flip it the turn after. This is good. This is good. But yeah, Perk of Pickles, Pixels. I am going to try to be better at playing Stone Forage and all of the, the equipment in this format. Okay. But real talk, <laughs> I think we're fucked. <laughs> okay, does Delver beat this? They go up to six. This down to four. I mean, it only exiles tap creatures. So. This helix kind of punished us for fetching for the island. It was like the one of the few things that actually it gets us. Jeskai is such a, so freaking greedy. Jeskai is so greedy. Like these land destruction decks just clap you. Like I had so many cards stranded in my hand. If I was able to play any of those, our opponent was toast. And like, that's the point of their deck obviously, but our deck's just really soft to them. Okay, so you pass, this guy's flipping. But Nahiri goes to eight. We send Nahiri down to five with the Delver. And then we can send Nahiri down to two. And then they're forced to choose between keeping the Nahiri alive or just trade it with the Delver. And obviously they come out of that ahead. And um, we were going to go to game two. Okay, we're just so deterministically dead. It's kind of depressing. Gust is actually pretty all right here. They're not really running any graveyard stuff. Their curve is really high, so Shul's not very good. Uh, like, Mana Leap's great. I honestly don't know if Snare's good, but it probably counters Helix and Boom Bust and maybe... Well, they're not running Chalice because they had both in their deck. So it counters Boom Bust and Helix at least. Uh... 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Needle seems good. They're running a lot of Planeswalkers. It seems better than um, the Helixes were running, which, like I already mentioned, kind of get clunky. But at the same time, we only have 58 cards in our deck, so I guess we're going to keep them in. <laughs> and on to the next round. <laughs> alright, 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 I've got this, I've got this. I've got this. We don't have this. Well, we were also on a bulligan to three, too. It just wasn't, like, the recipe for success. This hand kind of blows, but at the same time, it's kind of keepable. We have the mismatched ops, and then we have two delvers. We'll just play it and then hope it works. Next turn, I'm going to try to opt into a land for Delver if I don't find one off the top of my deck. Okay. No. So we'll draw. Perfect. This is, this is like premium, premium draws. In this case, we're probably casting um, Stoneforge. And this is a situation where we can get Fire and Ice. Fire and Ice would be really good here to slot on these Delvers. It'd give them pro red against um, their Red Walkers. Uh, yeah, it just seems solid here, I think. But I'll be completely honest. I'm not sure if I understand like the situations, other than like the really obvious ones where you'd want Sword over Batter Skull. Like if Stoneforge dies, though. Okay, well, I wasn't playing around man today, I'll be honest. We're not getting anything off of this stuff for a second. <laughs> there goes our, there goes our board. But on the bright side, we do have another threat. And we get the Serum Visions. So we'll just leave it on Serum Visions, I think. Okay, Mantis Rider is good, but we don't have any lands for it, so... I mean, we could just keep it anyways and opt into the lands. Sure, I'll well, send it. Okay, so we might also just be opting... Yeah, this is going to be awkward. Trinisphere. Right, well, that sucks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why are they playing Trinisphere in their mana tied lightning bolt deck? Uh, that's uh, that's just not what you want to see like, at all. Holy shit. Okay. Well, we can't opt in our upkeep anymore, even if we wanted to. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I needed to just play tighter last round, but that's fine. This is a learning experience. I mean, honestly, if we get boom here we're screwed it seems so bad yeah i mean if they're just killing our delvers for three mana i think that's fine with us honestly okay drop Fuck. <laughs> okay well we get to pass the turn we keep up gust and then we could also opt too that we obviously couldn't opt before our land drop because Trinisphere. Pillage. That garbage out of you. I mean, okay, what if we just didn't counter the pillage and then found a land and then started killing him with my structure? That actually sounds better, honestly. And then we get to save Aethergust for later. Okay. Might backfire. Because the thing is, is, they just pillage us next turn. And then we're just spinning our wheels. But this way we actually have like a proactive blend, which is not paying off. Hitting the basic flames there was brutal. 
I was uh, suboptimal. Oh, we couldn't even Aethercrest this if we wanted to. Yeah. Got a bonus. The Trinosphere. Holy shit. I did not see this coming. I was like... Yeah, whatever. I did not think they were running Karn in their deck. It was a possibility, but I wasn't going to, like, side in Ceremonious Rejection. Although, if we make it to Game 3, I think the Rejection is coming. Fuck. <laughs> oh, we're so unbelievably screwed. Like, they could just search for a worm coil and we can't do anything about it. They'll play one turn if they get a worm coil. <laughs> but the thing is, is they could just search for another thing. Yeah, well, uh... Okay, we'll play one turn. We'll play one turn. The thing is, is we can just draw a land for this Mantis Rider, and then we can hit the Karn, and then we could hope they just don't have anything. They're, but they're going to Liquid Metal Coating one of our lands, so we can't even cast a 3-drop this turn. So I think we're just hard-locked, right? I think we're just fucked. Yeah, no, I think we're just dead. Yeah, I, there's nothing we could do. Let's play <laughs> Randomly unplayable, my favorite type of magic. Fuck. I did not see the Trinisphere coming up. I don't know why they'd have Trinisphere and Mana Tithe and Bolt. That just seems like a shitty decision from them. Like, the Trinispheres aren't in their main deck, right? Like, it's just Trinisphere's, Trinisphere's sideboard for the Karn board, and then they just brought it in, so it's like a one of. Still seems bad, I don't know. I mean, I guess it hurts us more than it hurts them, but at the same time, it still doesn't seem like a good decision. Because even if it hurts us more than it hurts them, I just keep it in my cardboard. Like, no, like, this deck doesn't feel bad. With the Death and Taxes match, we actually did pretty well. I, yeah. It, that was just unfortunate, and then, like, a little bit of misplay. But that last one, we just kind of got fucked. This one, I don't think it's keepable. I mean, we're on the draw. We can hold up Opt Spell Snare. Like, I guess on that axis, it's fine, but whatever, we'll keep it. Like, honestly, the fact that we have variety of interaction plus cantrips make this keepable. The issue is we have no proactive anything. Okay, well, we'll go to our turn. Unless we can cast this right there. But I think we're just passing. We're going to just look to get a land off of this off. But I wanted the flexibility of spell snaring. Nothing really. Like, there's actually not much to spell snare unless they had forest sylvan scrying. But if they did have forest sylvan scrying, that'd be our only avenue to actually spell snare. And then if it was Etron, they could have cast like a Mindstone or something. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, we might actually be playing this game. Yeah, I don't know. I was playing around the fact that we might have drawn an island, but kind of chilling. We get to cast the Sprite Dragon. Next turn, we can double Serum Visions, grow the dragon, and then guarantee our next land draw. Probably off the second Serum Visions, and then play the Delver. And then we'll also have the Scar of the Serum Visions to set up the Delver. And then the turn after, we can cast the Mantis Rider. The issue is that kind of... Why is everybody running Karn? This card's not even, like, that good. Also, why do they just randomly have Natural Tron? <laughs> why am I getting confused? 
give me out. This is the league? I, I've seen more Trinospheres this league than I have seen... I don't know. Like, most months. Like, entire months of playing this game. Okay, well, the double serum missions plan seems really shitty now. Oh, we're so fucked. There's just no... There's no beating this, I guess. Okay. Well, we're hoping to hit another land. Preferably a white one. You can cast this Mantis Rider. Or we can just go on to the next game. All right, well, that was fun. <laughs> okay, well, we have Ceremonies Rejections, and we've got uh, Bithic Beetles. And Shoal's not great. And the Helix isn't solid. I mean, Spell Snare sucks, Path sucks. I mean, there's a lot of things that suck here, but... I mean, maybe trimming the one path and then keeping up or bringing in a braid for like O stones. And then trimming a snare. Maybe this was better. I don't really know. It's something I thought though. All right. On to the next match. Her game. We, we've got this. I, I don't want to just go 0 and 3. This deck's not even bad. I'm just getting derailed. Uh, sure. I, this hand's great, honestly. I, I just, my brain was just lethargic for whatever reason. Okay, what do we do here? Well, we can lead on the Delver from a blue-white land, I think. Okay. Oh, we get our Hollowed Fountain out. We get our Denver Secrets out. And that's about all we have going for us right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Got opponent. The Natural Tron. Our opponent's just that good at the game. Okay, what are we doing? Lightning Helix? Okay. Well, keeping the hand with no cantrips might not have been our wisest move. But I kind of had to send it. We still have Ceremonious Rejection. So like this hand plays at one mana. It's just, I don't know. Miserable. Ugh. Okay, okay, top keep search. This is kind of bad if we just had a, um... Cleansing Wildfire here. Okay. So hopefully we can hit and land next turn. Otherwise, we're kind of just screwed. But I feel like we're kind of just screwed anyways. I think we can't mulligan the hand with Delver Ceremonious Rejection, and we have like a decent chance of hitting another line. I don't know. You know. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I wish should have played Delver there. I guess I'm like protecting you against spatial contortion, but that seems so freaking out. Yeah, whatever. Ugh. That also just runs straight into Blast Zone, and we just lose Hardy. But I think playing second level is right there. Even if we lose harder to Spatial. Oh, I should have passed the Delver. That was a punt, actually. Should have passed the Delver. I mean, even if I play, if even if I path the Delver there, we still lose that one hundred percent. We don't have a, we don't have an out there. Wow. 
This deck is somehow performing worse than the Toski Teamer deck. So, realistically speaking, this deck could use an 18th land. I'd also like an 8th cantrip. But I don't know where those slots come from. I, I could trim a spell snare and a helix would probably be my two cuts. And then just run an extra land and an extra opt. But I'm not sure. I mean, like, I feel like 18 lands is probably good in the deck that wants to play Mathis Rider. Um, but I... I don't think the 17 lands was why we were losing those games. But in the future, I think I will make those changes. I think we're just losing the games because uh, Traduce Fuse is a very good magic card against us, and I was not prepared for it in either game. I mean, one of them we just got not drawn into Karn fetching Trinisphere. It's just very good against us. In winner's queue, the 0 and 3 brackets, the final frontier. We are going straight to fucking hell. All right, we have a frighteningly mediocre hand, but we're on the play, and I think it's fine. We have some interaction. Sword does trigger Sprite Dragon, and um, yeah, it's it's not great though. This hand doesn't excite me, but it's not incredibly disappointing either. Okay. Well, our opponent's tanking. They're not sure. They were terrified at how unbelievably slowly we decided to keep. 16 seconds isn't the worst. They kept 7. Wow, that was a, that was a long pause to keep 7 guards. Um, yeah, we're just going to get some cuts. We'll get our tap land. Okay, windswept teeth pass. All right, opponent, I respect it. I respect it. We could probably beat that. We could beat windswept teeth pass, right? Oh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I guess. Right, with our luck, this is probably just. That being said, our hand actually. As we just get to dominate them with these mana leads and this red dragon. And then Delver actually lets us use our mana super efficiently too. Okay, so we just need them not to play like a voice of resurgence here. Okay, that's actually really bad. Man, we 
we do not have an answer for this stuff. We have a lot of good draws to deal with Stoneforge, though. All right, lightning bolt off the top. That's not the worst card I've ever drawn. Okay. We can also just try to race the batter skull. I'm sure that'll work wonderfully. Oh, we could just play your own batter skull. I also have the sword in our hand. Sword is really solid against um these death like one twos. Alright, and then we get the batter skull. Alright. You know what? I I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Our opponent gets their 4-4 derperino. We get our 4-4 derperino. Life is good. Okay, hopefully we could draw a land next turn. Yeah, like they get their batter skull, we get our batter skull, and everybody's happy. <laughs> They're gonna be both absolutely useless. But yeah, like if we get a land, then we could just get a six-six batter skull. And like, what are they supposed to do against that? <laughs> Let's have their own six-six batter skull. Ice Fang, Quadil. Doesn't have death dust yet, but it is really scary. So I think we're going to. I guess sword is really good against the coattle though. We could just let it resolve. Honestly, it seems like a mistake to let it resolve them. But at the same time, we're behind. If we let it, I mean, if we cast a mana leak on it. So I guess we could just show it. Let's just show it. Yeah, I it this line's really hedging on the fact that we get or not the fact hedging on us getting a land next turn so that we can um, stoneforge or yeah stoneforge vial in the sword and equip it. Why? Our opponent just hates fun. I guess nobody gets a batter skull. Um, we could actually just put the sword in now, and then we can equip it to our goon. That doesn't sound awful. I think we're just going to trade batter skulls here. Um... Like, I, I don't know. I think our opponent just wants to... This is like in chess where you just like throw your queen at the other queen. It's like, I just don't want to play with queens this game, you know? They, they, they make the game too hard. And you know what? I respect their opponent. Because I get confused as fuck when a uh, batter skull enters the equation too. Okay, uh, no. Okay, we draw. I mean, the good thing is, is we can just attack them with the Sprite Dragon and then Vial in the Sword end of turn. We could also just bounce the Batter Skull back to hand at end of turn, too. But, um... I kind of just like getting the, uh... The Sword in play. I think it's really good here.
We could even put the sword on the Delver, potentially. And we kind of split it, you know, like Sprite Trek and Sir Chonky, Chonky Goon. Do we care about Second Stoneforge? I'm thinking we don't really care about Second Stoneforge. But at the same time, I do kind of care about Second Stoneforge. What do we... Okay, so they can potentially get another sword, but they might also have that sword in hand. But they could also instantly vial it in because they already have a stone forge in play. But at the same time, we could just kill the stone forge with our sword. <laughs> and also at the same time, like this mana leak is only getting worse. So we could just mana leak now and then. I'm fine with mana leaking now. And the thing is, is if we draw another land, then we can just. What happens if we draw another one? Yeah, we could still just uh, vial and then equip the sword. Okay, so they have their own mana leak. Sure, sure. Okay. Okay, but now they're tapped out. So if we do draw that land, then we get a guaranteed sword hit. So let's see what they search for. Again, it's possible they have equipments in their hand. Mall. Sure. Mall's actually kind of spook. Begin combat. Okay. So land or a spell would be really nice here. Okay, by land that wasn't quite what I meant, but okay. I mean, honestly, you could just make the argument that I just cast the sword and then get a Sprite Dragon trigger. But they don't know about this sword, so we can just play with the concealed information and they'll just assume that we're going to, like, batter Skull Bounce. Yeah, because now they on thin ice our Sprite Dragon. Okay, can't really see So they do have a Maul right now, which is going to give Flying and plus two, plus two. So that's a three, four with Flying and First Strike. Our Delver would be a five, four. So it would live through the, the Mauled Up Stoneforge, which is definitely worth looking at. Okay, so let's put the Sword in play. Okay, now we just need to flip our Delver. It shouldn't be hard. We have a lot of spells in our deck. Well, maybe it was harder than I anticipated. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, we can't really attack. We're probably just passing and then bouncing this batter skull. I think we just have to pass and bounce the batter skull. I mean, we could play the sprite dragon and then equip the sword to it. That'll be a 3-3 three, three with... Yeah, we can't attack into their Stoneforge Mystic, but we could just play it. I mean, I think playing it is pretty low opportunity cost, and then we just get to equip. I think this is a little bit better than just um, casting the batter, or bouncing the batter skull. Because our opponent can just bounce the batter skull too. Like we're pretty at, like we're at parity there. But yeah, another land to bounce and then replay the batter skull with the stone forge would be nice. I'm just going to put it in their ball. No, they're going to pass the butter stone. Uh, 
What are they doing? Maybe they're thinking. I don't know what this mana is for, though. This is like a weird set of mana. Like, what do you do with two white and a blue? Yeah, our opponent's confused what they do with two white and a blue, too. <laughs> sure, yeah, so they're gonna put them all in. Okay, well, they also have a Stoneforge Mystic. We're just jumping this with our own Stoneforge if they attack. Yeah. Oh, this is actually really, really fucking good for us, though, what? No, this is so terrible for them. Because... They... Can't actually block our Sprite Dragon, and we get to kill their Stoneforge. Oh, they just cast it. Okay, oh, that makes sense. Never mind. Okay, well, if we draw a spell... Yes. I mean, they're just forced to block this. They could not block it, but it'll be bad for them. Okay, so they didn't block. Um, at this point, we could just... Um, Helix this Stoneforge, and then um, we can Sword Trigger to kill it. Kinda of just had to chump it there though. Okay, take four. We get to kill it. Okay, we draw a card. What we get is kind of important too. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're just gonna play our stone forge. We're basically on like pretty much on block duty. The thing is, is they can re-equip, but it costs them a lot of mana. So they kind of have to skip their entire turn if they do that. Which is fine by me. I'll, I'll take that. And then they just die. <laughs> so they can equip this Batter Skull. They'll go down to four from their Pain Land. And then they'll go up to... 11. Okay. Okay, that's actually really bad for us. But it's not the end of the world. So they can't equip Batter Skull, which is obviously the best thing they could do, because then it'll have Vigilance. So, like, they can get rid of our Sprite Dragon here, but it's, Sprite Dragon is just Lemon and Lime Soda. It's not really that good. It's mostly just the Sword of Fire and Ice that's scary. So, they're just dead unless they sit on defense with this mall and if they sit on defense with this mall then they're dead to a couple of things as well sure okay so they've got a five six they're dead to path off the top but they're also dead to um bolts and helix basically anything i think we also brought in um Sudden shots. Wait. Is this game one? I think this is game one. <laughs> okay. What do we draw? Draw an opt. Okay, well, let's opt.
I'll just play a Delver and then pass. We're in a really tough spot, though, because they could just equip this Batter Skull, and then it'll just be this giant freaking Stoneforge, and then we just lose. We really needed to hit anything there. We had so many live draws that just kill our opponent. But we did not get there. Looks like our opponent was at one. We could have just swung in anyways, and then they couldn't have... Um, Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so we're taking nine here. They go up to 12. They kill our Delver. But like, Path still gets us up. Oh, okay. Like, Path is still great here. Okay, this is also good. That's rude. Oh, it's so lame. Oh, okay, well. I mean, they could have forced our path there too, so. Not much we could do about that. I, I'm starting to think that our deck isn't, like, great Stoneforge Mirrors. But at the same time, like, we do have Path to Exile, so we shouldn't be terrible in Stoneforge Mirrors. Yep. Wow. <laughs> okay, even if we have Path, uh, this Geist is a lot scarier than a Stoneforge, all suited up. We could have bounced Spider Skull there. Wouldn't have been terrible. Like, even if we equip it, it we just still lose. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think... I'm just going to concede the match. I was a disappointing 0 and 4. Just don't... Yeah. Well... That's it for me, for uh, for this league, I guess. I, yeah, I'm gonna make a couple of small changes, I guess. Yeah, so let's let's cut these two. Let's run the fourth ops. Let's also fix the mismatching ops. I, I freaking hate mismatching ops. Okay, so let's get opt. I definitely wouldn't have minded another um, Spiral Canal in here. Okay, so we've got our four Pirate Ops, perfect. And then we've got one Spiral Canal. Uh, this is just going to give us a little bit more consistency. Here, actually, do we want another Spiral Canal? We could uh, potentially run another uh, Seeker and Coast as well. I don't know. I'll think on that. I don't have another Spiral Canal right now, uh, so I'll just run another Seeker. But I'll think about which one's actually better. I mean, like, we do really want white for turn two with the Stoneforge. Uh, this is fine, I guess. I'm not, like, super excited about it, but... Like, the deck itself feels good. The deck is strong, you know? Like, Stoneforge is good. The issue is, like, you run into other Stoneforge decks, and then they also have cards like Icefang, Coatl, and then they just go a lot taller than you. 
Uh, like the Delver game plan seems fine. Sprite Dragon always feels okay. Um, it does carry swords really well though. I mean, it's possible. We just need a third equipment as well. Um, we had plenty of times where we just drew second stone forge, and then we wanted another sword to search for. Um, so, like, Ball is obviously a candidate. It's just a solid card. You could pay it, play it for three mana. I think it's a lot weaker, personally, in um, these decks that have a lot of flyers. But... We could also run sort of Feast and Famine. Wouldn't be terrible. Uh, the, the issue also comes where we have to make four cuts if we do that. And I think it really cuts into these Mantis Rider slots, to be completely honest. Um, honestly, the Mantis Riders might just have to go. I feel like they're the things that are like necessitating this uh, jump in mana. They... We, we just, like, had to hit three mana to play these Mantis Riders that we really just didn't need to win the game. But we needed to be able to play them, so that, that was kind of awkward. Um, and then... Yeah, so sort of Feast and Famine would be okay. I, it plays really well with our deck because we get to actually, like, hold up mana. Let's us cast a lot of spells and then also lets us pressure our opponent. Uh, honestly, some of the other swords wouldn't be terrible either. Like, uh, Light and Shadow would actually let us use our graveyard a little bit, and then bring back some of our creatures. <sighs> oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess there's just a couple of, like, mental notes to, uh, think about. And I'll revisit this deck. I, I honestly don't think it was that bad. I, I don't think this deck was, was an 0-4 deck. Um, we just happened to 0-4 with it. Because we're just that talented, honestly. But yeah, I'll catch y'all around. Peace.